So we have looked at uh, convolutions in some detail uh, so far in this course, uh, and in particular, we have looked at discrete uh, discrete time convolutions. So convolutions where the uh, independent independent variable is a discrete variable. So mm, here is another uh, way to look at uh, discrete convolutions. I mean, let us define two sequences. Um, let's say a of n uh, and b of n, where n goes from where n is takes integral values or let, let's say whole number values just to keep things simple um, and takes these values so uh, to further simplify it let us assume that uh, a of n and b of n are both non zero up to some point after which they are zero so n does not go uh, up to infinity but it goes up to some finite value um, and after that uh, the both of these sequences are zero. So we need to find the convolution of these two sequences. So let us define these polynomials. Let's define p1 of x equal to a0, a of 0, plus a1, x, plus a2 times x square, and so on. And let's define p2 of x as b0 plus plus okay so uh, now let us look at what happens when when you multiply uh, these two polynomials so um, a thing to note here is that a subtle point here is that p1 of x um, even though uh, the series that we are concerned with are an and bn p1 of x is not really a function of n so the independent variable here is, if you really want to look at it, is x. So these are just some functions that we have defined just uh, as a tool to simplify this con convolution. So uh, x is not really the variable that we are concerned about, but it is the independent variable in these two definitions. So now let's uh, multiply these two polynomials. Uh, let qx equal to p1x into p2x. So this is just a simple multiplication of two functions. So this is not a convolution, but let's see what happens when you do it. So this, uh, we can expand it as, now let us look at the coefficient of uh, the term, let us say x raised to five. So uh, we are looking at the coefficient of x raised to five term. So what are the different ways to get x raised to five? So to get x raised to five, you can take the constant term from here and the x raised to five term from here. Or you can take the linear term from here and the x raised to four, uh, x to, to the power fourth term here. Uh, uh, so there are six possible combinations in which you can end up with x raised to five. So let us look at the c. Uh, um, so what's that going to look like? So let's call the coefficient c of five uh, times x raised to five, and that is going to look like this. So this is a of zero times b of five into x raised to five That's right. plus a of 1 times x times b of 4 times x raised to 4 yeah. plus a of 2 x square times b of 3 x cube plus a of 3 x cube times b of 2 x square plus uh, these are the only ways in which you can end up with x raised to 5. If you uh, write it in a, a more readable format, so these are these are six terms. So th these can be represented by this summation uh, like this. So you have i equal to 0 to 5. So i is essentially the parameter passed to a. So the, I can expand, I can write the, the same thing as a of i times b of 5 minus i. That's right. And the whole thing multiplied by x raised to 5. Very. So essentially, uh, what we have done is, so we have defined c of 5 to be the summation going from i equal to 0 to 5, a of i into b of 5 minus i. So in general, if you look at the uh, coefficient of x raised to n, it looks like something like this. 
So if you if you look at this expression carefully, you'll realize that this is precisely the convolution of uh, the two sequences a n and b n. Um, so if you're worried about this i, the index going from 0 to n and not minus infinity to infinity, uh, you can check that uh, if this i is negative, a i, which we defined only for positive terms, you can redefine it to be 0 for uh, when n is negative and uh, if you do if you do that you'll re you'll see that this is just the convolution and uh, the other terms the terms which are not here they are just ignored very good yes that's indeed very correct in fact you know you will now you'll realize it's a very good point that siddhant has brought out because what he's shown is that what we do so frequently in high school math multiplying two polynomials is essentially an instance of discrete convolution is a very beautiful observation. I am sure all of you must have enjoyed this. In fact, you know, take it further. When you multiply two numbers written to a certain base, you see, for example, suppose I wrote two numbers, say 461.52, let us say, and or 37.6. What is this really? This is 4 into 10 squared plus 6 into 10 plus 1 into 10 to the power 1 here, 10 to the power 0 plus 5 into 10 raised to the minus 1 plus 2 10 raised to the power minus 2 and this is 3 10 raised to the 1 and so on. And now when you are multiplying these, this is an instance of the polynomial multiplication which Siddhan talked about. So, in effect, you know, now to get the so called coefficients of the different powers of 10, you would actually be carrying out a convolution of these digits. The only problem is now, in addition to convolution, you would then have to carry over. You know, so this is an instance where you multiply two numbers to a given base, you first need to do a convolution of the digits, and then you need to carry over because some of those products would give you a quantity more than 10, 10 or more than 10 and then you need to carry, you know. So, that is a very interesting observation. In fact, Siddhant has in some sense already given you an exposure to what we are going to do in module 4. There we are going to talk about the Z transform and the Z transform we are actually, you, you will see. Now, remember, you know, if some of you do module 4, if you do the second course, you should try and keep this observation of Siddhant in mind and try and relate it to what we are doing in the z transform there. So, it is very interesting, but for now even the observation in its own right that polynomial multiplication is essentially an instance of convolution is very useful to understand convolution and we must definitely appreciate Siddhant for having done a very good job in bringing this up. Thank you Siddhant, are there any other points that you want to discuss uh, now? So, so uh, for, also, for yeah. those of you who are interested in computer science, so uh, there is an algorithm which can do convolution in uh, less time than it takes to actually f find evaluate the, these points. So, uh, there, there are algorithms uh, for, so if you want to multiply two, n n, uh, two sequences of length n, so there are algorithms that can do it in time n log n instead of uh, the usual way which would take n square. So, uh, this this is really interesting and so you would expect that if you have to multiply two numbers e each of length n, uh, each having n digits, you would take n square time, right? So, you have to multiply each digit by, each digit in one number by the every other pair, number. Every pair, every of, every pair of digits. So, uh, you do not actually have to do this. So, there are algorithms to do that and we, we will not study those algorithms, but uh, we will, uh, I mean, you will get a flavor of, of uh, how the algorithm. Perhaps, you know, if, so if some of you look at something called the fast Fourier transform, it would give you a flavor of this. And you know, you can do the fast, of course, this is a little beyond the scope of this discussion, but I am just mentioning it for those of you who might have some interest. Very good, that is a very good observation. So, you could have efficient algorithms for convolution, that is a well studied theme. Very good, so I think we will conclude the discussion here. We look forward to your reactions on this. The whole idea of these discussions is to evoke reactions from you as well. Thank you so much. Thank you.